to my garden. So we've not been out here for a little bit. I've got a few things that I want to show you. So let's go. Look at this. This is my first sweet pea. I've kind of stuck it out the back of the trellis here so that my neighbours can see it when they walk past. But look, isn't it pretty? Very beautiful. And do you see the little hoverfly there? I've seen a ton of these little creatures recently. Just flying around. Oh, there it is. Got some progress here on my tomatoes. This one is the black cherry variety. And over here, this is my tomato variety. You can see we've got some baby tomatoes. And we can also see I'm gonna have a fantastic harvest of radish seeds. Don't really know if I should be replanting those given that every time I plant radishes, they bolt, but well, I'm going to have plenty of seeds to experiment with, I guess. I can always use them for microgreens, I suppose. My tomatoes on this side have not done too well. There is this one, which is getting this, this black colour on its leaves, and I don't know what that means. I don't know if that's bad. It, it's probably bad. Yeah, this was my indigo rose variety. But you can see if I look down at the roots, this is a stem that's got that black damage to the leaves. But then you have got stems on the same plant, which are throwing out healthy leaves. So in my, I'm not too worried about this. I might just cut off this and hopefully he'll recover. And then this one, which is finally putting off flowers can just see there. This one is Fahrenheit Blues. So that's what variety this one is. And hopefully I'll get at least one tomato off it to try. I'll just check out my nasturtiums while we're here. Oh, look at it, isn't it beautiful? I particularly like these orangey red ones and then these ones that have that little flame of colour but that don't have the, the spots. Then this is my dahlia at the front which has started to get petals but there's been something eating it so um, yeah it's not looking as best bless it little to the right and this is my mullein that I pilfered a seedling from somewhere where there were lots of seedlings and you can see it's flowering very nicely there got my phacelia doing well still so this is a flower from my elephant garlic which is purple and very very cute I quite like this and just here, you will see that I did actually plant some purple peas. I only have one plant that is actually purple, but we can live with that. And then the others, which it's not the best light, so I don't know if you can see that, but these were my pink blush uh, sugar snaps. You can just probably about see it's got a tiny pink blush running all along the pea which is quite cute I'm actually letting this one go to seed so that I can have more next year got a cute little pea flower up there oh this is my new bee house so hopefully I'll get some nice little bees moving in there before long and also hopefully it holds together a lot better than the one that I got from M&S. Uh, this one was from Sainsbury's. 
got some little corn cockles growing. These things are so cute. I really quite like them. And got another prickly little teasel there. Look at those sunflowers. I'm so glad that I decided to have a sunflower year this year. I mean, look at them. They're, they're getting so huge right now. They drink a hell of a lot, I will tell you that now. Especially these two at the front. But then they do have slightly smaller containers than the ones at the back. And then, turning around a little bit, there is also this huge one. These are not even giant varieties, they're just regular ones. I am excited though to see what colour these turn out to be. I have planted a lot of varieties and um, most of them are bicolour or red or sort of reddy brown kind of varieties because it makes my heart happy to see red sunflowers because for the longest time I didn't even know they existed. So yeah, I am I'm so excited to see what colour these all turn out to be. Just pull this sunflower down a little. You can see that that's got a nice little top developing. And if I pull some of these ones down, you see they've got some nice big tops developing also. Well, maybe not so much that one. Can you tell I'm just so impatient to see how these are going to turn out? So coming over here, there is something that I want to show you. Look at this. Ah, oh, such tomatoey goodness. And it smells so strongly of tomatoes. Oh, it smells so good. That one's pretty big. The biggest one is just here. And I completely forget which variety it is, so I'll just grab the tag. It is a Golden Sunrise. So I'm so excited. So excited about these. And whilst we're in this bed, my time, my creeping time is doing well. It's come back to life well after the winter got my artichoke not is it an artichoke it's not it's it's those little asparagus spear thingies looking all ferny and pretty and I've got some grain of some description growing this has actually just fallen out of the bird feeder up there and I figured yeah, it's not hurting anything I may as well let it grow and ripen and the birdies can be munching on that in the winter. My emerald ice kale as well is looking rather nice. I got quite a few of these to sprout, so they sort of dotted here, there and everywhere in the garden. Although the butterflies, with the hot weather that we've been having recently, have been out laying eggs on everything. So I'm sure before long they will be eating holes in stuff. They will be taking over where the slugs left off. It's so much fun being a gardener and battling all the creatures to get to your harvest before they do. Over here, we've got what remains of my poppy harvest, or my poppy seeds, plants, whatever. As you can see, there is a little spidey that has built its web in between the poppies and the tomato plant over here. This is Brad's Black Heart variety, in case anyone was wondering. So I'm not going to be touching the poppies and moving them so that you can see them better because I don't want to disturb the spidey and, you know, incur his wrath. Now there's no flowers on this one yet, I don't think. But I guess this time. In here is where I grew my onions. 
only the onions flopped over and are probably sort of slowly decaying in the soil. And I've got volunteer tomatoes popping up. What I'm pretty sure is a volunteer catnip popping up. Let me know if I'm right on that one. I'm pretty sure I am. And down here, I've got some of my home saved seeds for my spring onions, my red spring onions, so that's cool. I've got my cornflowers over here. A lot of them have started going to seed now. So whilst you're here, I may as well show you. So basically you have a flower like this and then it all dries up can see the dried petals there and the seeds what happens you pull off the petals and then you get something like this if you leave it alone it will basically open up again like this naturally and your seeds are all in here in the middle just see if I can get you some out Oh, there we go. Now that is cornflower seed. It's a little purpley white seed with a tuft of hair on the top. So they're all stored in the middle like this. And they will self seed on their own if you don't pull them out. But if you want to spread them in other areas of the garden, you have to make sure you get them before they self-seed and then just sprinkle them wherever. Uh, you can take them and store them. You can actually sow these in September, October and overwinter them or you can sow them in sort of March time in the spring and grow them then as well. Now these things are my potatoes that I grew from true potato seed and they've started to make flower buds, which I will just show you now. Do you see this thing here? That will very soon be a bunch of potato flowers, which is pretty cool, because it means I'm gonna have fresh seeds for this year, potentially. That is, of course, assuming that I don't manage to knock off all the flowers. It's assuming the flowers manage to get fertilized. It's assuming that the fruits don't roll away before I manage to harvest them and get the seeds out. Um, probably not gonna get every single fruit that develops, but it's a good sign that they are at least making buds because if they're making buds, they will be making flowers. So, good sign. Just a word of warning though, with uh, potato fruits, because what, what happens when you fertilise the flowers, they make a little fruit. And what it, it looks a little bit like a green uh, cherry tomato. They are said to taste very bitter, so it's unlikely that your children or pets are going to eat them. But if, if there's any chance that they might, you might want to keep them out of reach of your pets and children because those tiny little fruits that do look very much like a green cherry tomato, they are poisonous. You'll get sick from eating them. And obviously you can't explain to your pets to leave them alone. And depending on your children, some don't always listen. So you might want to keep them out of reach if you are wanting to, to grow the fruits and collect them. Top tip there. Over in the flower bed, things are doing well. You can see my rogue strawberry that planted itself is getting nice big leaves. It's managing to uh, outcompete this stuff, the variegated nepeta, which is running for world domination at the moment. But the strawberry is making runners, <laughs> which I didn't even notice. 
to the strawberry, it seems, is bent on world domination itself also, which is absolutely fine. That is absolutely fine with me. And you can see it's already been successful at populating itself here, <laughs> which is good because more strawberries mean more fruit for me, although it is likely all the slugs will get it. Uh, this was my large dahlia that was trying to outgrow the slugs, but um, as you can see from the leaves, was not altogether too successful. This is my one of my teasel seeds which sprouted this year. Uh, teasels are a biennial, so what will happen, it will make a big basil rosette like this the first year, and then in the second year, the flower stalk will sprout and it will look a lot like that one up there. And if you leave the seeds um, in the winter and you don't hack it down, then the birds will actually eat the seeds from that and it will give them a nice little energy rich treat throughout the winter when finding food is hard. This is my beautiful black petunia. Oh, this is still so beautiful to me. It really does feel like velvet. The, the variety name is black velvet, so it is aptly named. This is my black dahlia that initially was eaten down to the bone with slugs. But you can see it's making all leaves now and it's trying to make a comeback. It may or may not flower this year, but at least it should be able to store some energy down in the root to perhaps make another attempt at a comeback next year. This is my Dahlietta variety uh, patty. It is a very pretty and I almost put this back at the nursery because my basket was getting very heavy. I'm pretty glad that I didn't now. These were my Dahlietta's variety, Becky. They're very beautiful even in this state, but you're not seeing them at their best. They have been ravaged somewhat by the slugs. And then this. Uh, is, I guess, forget-me-nots. No idea how it got here, but it's here now, and it only appeared this year, and as you can see, it's already everywhere. And it's making seed pods, so no doubt this is going to be competing with this for and the strawberry that's making runners. So it's going to be a toss up between them three for who gets the most real estate in this flower bed. Over here, this is quite exciting. This is actually my patty pan sunburst and it's the first flower to open on it. You can actually eat these flowers, they're edible. Uh, pollinating insects do love them though, so make sure there are no little bugs hiding inside before you do eat them. A lot of people stuff the flowers with cream cheese and then sort of, I think they deep fry them or something like that. So I'm excited to see this flower here because, oh, actually, is that another flower? That is, that's another flower opening. Cool. So usually with squashes, they start with the male flowers to get the pollinators in and interested and then after they've made a relationship with the pollinators, the female flowers, which are the ones that need to be fertilised, they start opening, which means you can start making fruit. This one over here, which is my baby boo pumpkin, is not doing so well, but I'm hoping now that most of the garlic is out of the bed, I'm hoping these will start to do better. Got lots of lovely purple flowers on my weird chili. 
which are gonna make me lots of yummy chilies. In fact, they're already making me lots of yummy chilies. See, there's one here. There's one behind it, which this leaf is sort of hiding from view. See there? That's a chili. There's one. That's a chili. So yeah, super excited about that. This is my salads that bolted. I think it's mostly mustards, but I've been saving some of the seeds from this that have dried. So I'm going to have a ton of salad seeds for next year, which is fabulous. Because the more seeds you save, the less you have to buy. Something else I'm excited to show you as well. Look at my sweet potato. I can't believe I finally got this to grow. I've been trying for ages to get it to grow by putting the bottom in water and holding it in place with toothpicks. But it actually worked a lot better for me to just put the potato sort of half in soil and wait. It did take a very long time for it to start making leaves, but now that the leaves are here, it is going from strength to strength. So what I'll probably do, I'll overwinter this this year as like a sort of house plant. And then next year I should have enough material in theory to uh, start planting sweet potato slips and get myself some sweet potatoes. Apparently they like a lot of heat so um, it's going to be interesting to see how well they do outside in the UK especially as I'm in northern UK in Yorkshire but I guess we'll see. Just because it's not done commonly doesn't mean that it can't be done. What's life without a little experimentation? So thank you for joining me in my little garden tour today. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope to see you again in the next one. Bye.